Hello and welcome to whatever it is that this is. Uh, what are you talking about? My name's David, I'm a technical audio designer slash audio programmer and tool developer. And I wanted to take you through a short course in meta sounds, getting started in Unreal uh, and why you don't need middleware. Uh, I've honestly found meta sounds is so exciting and such a, such a, change in uh, game audio. It, it benefits us in so many ways to be great users of it. Uh, so we're going to be talking about how we might replicate some of the behaviors of middleware uh, in Unreal, uh, which is really exciting. Um, well, that is unfortunate. It won't always be perfect. Uh, occasionally we'll have to update our drivers, occasionally we'll bump into problems, and we'll be looking at all sorts of ways that we can get started with Unreal Engine. So what I'm going to be doing is taking you through installing this, uh, this project, this new learning project called the Wild West Learning Project, and building random containers, building blend containers, building ambiences, uh, some animation stuff, and basically whatever we would find that we might want to plug in to a game engine. Uh, you'll look into blueprint scripting, uh, C++ stuff uh, as well, depending on if we get really stuck into that, and uh, all sorts of different things. So to start with, uh, I want to go to the marketplace and download this plugin. Uh, this content pack. So we're going to go to the marketplace, look for the Old West Learning Project, which is a brand new project come out four or five days ago. Uh, if you haven't downloaded it yet, it will say download. For me, it says create project. It is quite big. Uh, it's a 20 or something, 30 gig, something like that. So once you've downloaded it, hit create new project. Um, then you'll go through whatever this is. And this took about 20 minutes uh, of loading all the textures, loading all the models and starting to get stuck into it. Now, once we do that, we'll need to make a new meta sound. So we can right click anywhere and click uh, sounds and then meta sound source. Now it is out of beta now, uh, so we can actually start using this thing in production ready projects. Now, in terms of what meta sounds is, it's a kind of DSP flow graph uh, where we start with a play event or some kind of event in and we do something and then we connect up to on finished and that will post back out say on finished. We're gonna do quite a bit of meta sound scripting and I recommend you check out uh, the city sample pack as well uh, for a, a whole bunch of reference of what we're going to be achieving and we're kind of recontextualizing that. For now, right click anywhere in the meta sounds graph and we're going to have a look through we are going to look straight for a wave shape or sorry, a wave player function here. Uh, that's just going to take an audio file and play it. Now there is all sorts of synthesis and different options here. There's all sorts of deliverables for 5.1, 7.1, mono, quad, stereo. It just kind of keeps going on and on, but we're going to use a straight mono wave player here. Um, and look at attenuation, look at some of the different sources. Now you can search for it uh, in the top bar as well. So once we've searched for it, you'll see we just need to connect up the on play and hitting space bar will technically play this wave player. But without an output, we're, the audio file doesn't go anywhere or the audio buffer doesn't go anywhere. Uh, we're gonna connect up the out mono to the out mono and when you hit play, you should actually be able to hear this now. Connecting up that on finish tag just lets you know that the sound is finished um, and you won't see it here, but we need to check a loop as well. And we need to look for a wave asset. So I'm gonna go into Reaper, look for uh, just a basic tone generator and generate something. And I'm gonna set this to B flat because everyone does A and I don't want to. So uh, we're just gonna export a really, really short clip of that. Um, you will see some stuff in Reaper here. We're gonna do some stuff in sound design. You don't have to use Reaper. Um, but it's awesome. Bring that into the project, drop it anywhere, make a new audio file folder and put it in and you'll see it now appears in our wave asset dropdown. So hitting spacebar, you should now hear or hitting the play icon, you should now hear the meta sound. Now, the beauty of this is that you can grab this meta sound, drop it straight in the world. And when you hit play, you will actually be able to hear it, which is really, really exciting. Um, it's well, I guess it's really exciting for me <laughs> to see stuff happening so quickly. We're only a few minutes into the video and we already have our first sound playing, which is super duper exciting. Now, this is only one step. You'll notice that we can't hear it positionally. So let's change that. Let's make it quieter, uh, louder and quieter. For that, uh, we're gonna use a thing called attenuation. Um, this is the, the volume being attenuated over distance. So 
create a new attenuation, create a new folder for your attenuations and drop in just a default attenuation. We won't focus too much on naming convention. We won't focus too much on having everything right from the get-go because we're not building features at this point, okay? We're just having a play. So dropping in a new attenuation, when I double click to open that attenuation, you'll see all manner of different things here. You get a whole bunch for free that we'd normally have to do some detailed behavior. You get attenuation shapes, you get cone filtering and radius stuff and fall off distances and uh, air absorption and um, all sorts of cool things. For now, I'm literally gonna leave it default. And you can see now that I've applied that to the MetaSound, I get attenuated sources, which is pretty cool. Uh, we already get something that's spatialized and positional and works in the game. If you're familiar with UE4, you can still use au.debug.soundcues, um, though I'd also recommend going to the asset store to pick up uh, Sweet Justice Tech's um, Audio Inspector, which is somewhere on the screen. Um, I'll work out how to link it, or it'll be in the links below. From here, I want to define some of the extra special behavior. So I'm going to right click, make a new blueprint and this blueprint will be an actor and it's just going to play the meta sound in the same way that we already play the meta sound. For that to happen, we need to create a variable to store our meta sound. And, and I kind of think of this as like a pizza shop, um, knowing that you want a pizza, uh, not necessarily what pizza or anything like that. We're going to get to that, but the type of thing that you're storing is a reference to a pizza. Now we're going to create that meta sound reference and change it from a Boolean reference to a meta sound source uh, reference. And this makes it able to accept types of pizzas, I suppose, um, or flavors of pizzas, I shouldn't say types. From here, uh, we can go into what sound to play um, and trigger up the correct meta sound. Um, you'll notice I missed that here and we're going to go back and fix that in a second. So on play, I can click and drag the meta sound, get a reference to it and spawn it at location, which will spawn it in the world in the same place that it is at the moment. And it feels weird because we've refactored it to work exactly the same way, but it's going to work exactly the same way. Set up your attenuation and move on like that. Once we've hit save here and compile, we go back into the game, we can delete our old meta sound and drop in our new meta sound actor. You can see the icon changes as well. Hitting play here, it should sound exactly the same, but we've actually missed a key point here. We set up the pizza shop, but didn't tell it what pizza to make. Okay, now if I scroll down, uh, scroll up rather, in the MetaSound source here, you'll see that I haven't actually placed one. So adding a reference to it, hitting play, it should sound exactly the same as it did before. Now I know I'm going quick here, uh, we can kind of go up and back. This is just an introductory lesson to get started with placing your first sound in. So I encourage you to rewatch elements of this, but just to show you how quickly this does work once you know where you're going with it. Now the special behavior I'd like to have here is I'd like to have it start and stop when I get closer and further away from it. Now to do that is a little bit complicated. Uh, we need to store a reference to the meta sound source itself and store a reference to the audio source. And it comes with this, our first few bugs in audio programming. We're going to take the meta sound source and connect it up to two methods, the uh, generate overlap events or on overlap and off overlap, um, which is going to come from the mesh of some sort. Now we'll just have a big ugly sphere that we can change the size of, but we'll obviously cull that at some point. Now, when you have these two events, uh, we can now trigger and play and stop um, a reference to that sound object. What we'd really like to do is make a sphere. This sphere is going to be our determining factor for the size of our overlap. And I'm leaving out a key point here because I want to show you how we can solve a problem when it does appear. For We're going to change the overlap events um, here to change away from block all, so it's not a solid sphere, but a sort of trigger sphere, I guess, if that makes sense. Now we'll get into physics uh, optimization and maybe not having everything as overlap all um, in a little bit of a later lesson, but for now it should be totally fine. Now when we hit play and we fly into the sphere, we're expecting it to uh, stop playing when we leave the sphere and start playing when we go back in the sphere. And we have a problem here. We're playing at the start because we're spawning the sound 
and we're stopping, but we have all these null references. And this is just because we haven't cached an audio source to start with. Rather than have it try and redetermine where the source is, we're just going to get into this habit of saying, well, if it doesn't have to happen at runtime, maybe it shouldn't. So we're going to delete a whole bunch of the uh, cached stuff and we're going to refactor this blueprint in a, in a pretty pivotal way, but one that looks very similar when it is done. So deleting a few of the components. So we're going to create a new variable uh, that's a, or a new component, which is our speaker uh, for our Metasound. We're going to set up our Metasound speaker um, with the Metasound that it is to play. And from there, we're going to basically play and stop that source itself, more so than the meta sound. Now, this is very familiar to UE4 audio programming, so it does come back to uh, a solid basis in that, but it's still very versatile and very usable in this way because we don't need necessarily the meta sound to handle this logic. Um, we will get into that as well. Hitting compile and going back to our project, we should now see that when we hit play, we should not have the sound at start because we're not spawning it anymore. Playing the sound when we enter the sphere and stopping the sound when we leave. And we have a relatively optimized system here. Now again, I'll go through physics calculations and, and um, culling some of these extra physics events of overlap all dynamic. It's not generally a great idea to do that necessarily, but it is something that we can get started with um, and a way to get your first meta sounds in the game. So the next lesson, we are going to be talking about a random container. We're going to go quite a bit slower when it comes to building and constructing what all these references and all this terminology uh, means when we look at it. But I wanted to introduce you to the project um, and get getting started with a little bit of a playground for uh, looking into what you can do with this fantastic new DSP graph. Um, I know from being uh, from middleware specifically, WISE um, and FMOD and, and shipping a number of games on those uh, platforms, I think this, this pre presents a really good opportunity for us to get some of the max MSP creativity with the you know, WISE structure and, and things like that um, and deliver it in, in a really engaging and fun way uh, in Metasounds in Unreal Engine 5.1 and, and for future, obviously. Now, uh, I, 